is going on guys happy friday hope everybody's having a great week i just wanted to stop by today and do a quick video on something a little bit different than the funnel side but it has a direct correlation with those of you who are building funnels i spent a lot of my time in ux ui software which is like adobe xd or figma or sketch it doesn't really matter which one you use but in order to do certain things that you need to add to your websites or your funnels i really highly recommend using one of these softwares i've been using adobe xd for the last year and i've gotten really good at it and i've just found there's certain limitations and i've found that those limitations are not present in some of the other ones like figma and figma specifically has a bunch of features that Adobe XD does not have. This video specifically, I'm gonna cover some of the plugins that I use that are just amazing in Figma. This is just like barely scratching the surface as to what's available out there and how much time you can save using these plugins. I'm not gonna give you a rundown of exactly how to use the software. There's tons of videos on YouTube on how to properly set up an account and use the software. It is free to use. The only time it costs is if you upgrade and you wanna do certain things, but you can use it for free. So I would suggest getting one of these softwares now, and I would suggest if you're debating on which one to use, if you've never learned a system, go with Figma. Okay, so Figma is a very basic platform. It has um, a canvas that is pretty much infinite. You can scroll all the way in or all the way out and it's set up via artboard. So anytime I want to make <clears throat> a different area of my page, I would just set up a new artboard by clicking this um, up here. It's a frame sign. I just click the frame and then I choose how my size of my frame. I'm gonna walk you through some of the things you can do with these artboards. And so I have a couple basic ones already built. So the way to access your plugins is go to the hamburger menu and then scroll down to plugins. And then if you go to manage plugins, you'll be taken to this screen where you can click community. And here you can click plugins and there is a giant list of awesomeness in here. And so you can have as much fun as you want, download, test them out. Most of them are completely free, so there's really no um, risk to do it. Once you like it, click install. It adds it directly into your system. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through a couple of these here. The first one we're gonna talk about is called Better Font Picker. So actually before I load that, inside of Figma, let's say you are doing like a website mockup or whatever it is, um, and you need to add some text. So when I add my text, this is some text, I can see it on here and I can change uh, my size over here. So if I wanna change this to 80, I can do that. But if I wanna change the actual font, and I go up into the font list, all these look the same to me. I have no idea what they are unless I know specifically what that font is. So what you can do is you go over to plugins and you go to better font picker. And now when you scroll through, you can see all the fonts like they would appear in Google or whatever else you're using. So now when I want one of these fonts, I just click it, exit out, and now I have the font that I could see. So that's better font picker. It's super simple, but man, it saves a lot of headache. Okay, next one we are going to go to is flat icons. If you've done any type of design or uh, website or funnel design work, you know that uh, you use icons a lot. So flat icons is the place to go online and this will just save you the trouble of having to actually go to the site and download it. So if I need a icon, let's say I'm looking for a money icon, I find the one that I want, here's a money bag, I click it, it adds it to my time frame or my canvas here and now I can do whatever I want with this. These are vector based so if I just zoom in on it and I click it I can change the color to whatever I want. All right and then I can just pull that into one of my artboards and we are off and running. Okay so that's flat icons. Super super simple but super very time saving. All right next one we're going to talk about is kind of the same deal but it's unsplash. So if you've ever used any stock photos, you're probably either using Pexels or Unsplash. So this is just a way to use that without having to go to the site. So I come into Unsplash, I can click portrait and it's gonna load everything that it has for portrait or I actually, you know what? I think when you click the button, it actually just gives you a random one. So if I wanna actually find one myself, I would go in here and I would go up to search. So let's say I wanna search for a woman. And now I can actually choose which one I want. So as soon as I find the one I want, I just hit that and it's going to insert it on whatever artboard you have selected. If you don't have any selected, it'll just put it on your canvas. So you can do whichever one you want with it, okay? So that is Unsplash. 
Next one we are going to talk about, we can go to Make Blob. Make Blob, if you've done any design work in the last couple of years, blobs are pretty uh, popular right now. And so Make Blob is just, just that, it makes blobs. It starts with a circle. The more complex you get, uh, the more complex your blob gets. And then if you do a contrast, that's gonna give you edges. So whatever kind of blob you're looking for, you just kind of do that. And then you add it to your canvas. And once again, these are vectors. So if I just, if I scale this, I wanna make it as big as I can for now, I'll zoom in on it and I can take the color of this and I can change it to whatever I want, okay? And then if I want to, I can take my other images. So if I just bring this to the front here, so bring to front and then I drag it over and now I can layer my images on top of each other like that, okay? So that is make blob, all right? Next one we have, uh, we're gonna save the best one for last. Uh, let's go to, let's do clay mockups. So clay mockups, if you are going to be making mockups like iPhones, um, specifically iPhones for this one, there are other, um, there are other plugins where you can do computers or t-shirts or whatever, but this is specifically for phones and it works really smoothly. So I like this one really a lot. So what this is, is you open up clay mockups and you can turn this however you want and you can change your device color. If you go here, since this is a vector, actually you have to have the paid version to change your device color. So this one will just always stay in white. If you do pay for this, then you can change a lot of these settings, but um, I can rotate it. Like I said, it does have the branding, so be careful where you're putting it. Once I have it where I'd like it in terms of rotation, I'm just going to select my frame that I already have that's 375 by 812 and it's going to put it directly in there. So if I select my other frame, which is my Figma frame we're gonna use on the last one, it's actually gonna put it in there too, but that's not the proper size, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to size it for me, so it still looks pretty good. But the iPhone frame is the one that we would want since it's the right size, then I would click Save as Image, and once I save it as an image, it's going to appear on my artboard. I think I might've exited out too quickly there. But basically, if I wouldn't have done that, so let's do that one more time. Clay mockups. Once I get it here, let's go to iPhone frame. And then let's rotate it and save it as an image. And once we have the image saved, then it's going to show up on our canvas and we can use it wherever we want. So there we go. It just takes a second for it to render. And now I just take this and I resize it. Oops, not flip it. I'm going to resize it and then I can use this however I want on my canvas. All right, if I wanna put it in here, I can do that, or wherever I want, I can place it. All right, so that is Clay Mockup, and the last one we're gonna talk about is the Grand Poobah of them all, and it is called Vectory 3D. So essentially, Vectory 3D does the same thing that um, the Clay Mockups does, it just does it in a 3D format, and you can use other types of mockups. So you're saying, well, why would you ever use the other one if you can use this one? Well, the other one is really nice because it's just got like a clay feel to it and it doesn't necessarily have like a super 3D feel. So when you use the phone in this one, it's going to make it full on 3D. It just takes a little longer to load. The file size is a little bit bigger. So I just like to shortcut the some of that stuff sometimes, but you can use this software to replace the other one if you don't like the other one. So for this, Let's do a really cool demonstration here. I'm gonna use a soda can. And what they say is it tells you exactly what size of frame you need to put on this soda can. So I built this frame in the background, the black one with the Figma logo, to this 2220 by 1200 size. And all I have to do now is I just have to click on that frame, so my vectory text, texture frame. And then I put use frame and it's going to take that entire frame and it's gonna wrap it around this can. And then I can t spin this and I can make it wherever I want. So if I wanna like tilt it down and have kind of a cool look like this with the cap up there, you can see it's got good reflection. And then I save it as an image and it's gonna do the same thing that our other one did. And it's going to put it up there. You can see that I actually rotated it too far. So the top is cut off. So let's try that one more time again. So let's go into Vectory 3D. Let's get our can. Let's do that same process one more time just so you can see the finale here. So once I got this here, I'm going to use the frame. And now it looks good. Let's just turn it just a little bit. Let's save it as an image. And now you can see how much better that looks. You can see the whole top now. 
because I didn't screw it up. And when you zoom in, it is really high quality. All right, and you can use that on any of your um, artboards and it will look really super 3D. It would probably even look better if you used a light background because it has a shadow. So if I use like a white background, you can see that the shadow from the, the can is casted on the white background now, okay? All right, guys, well, that's just a few of them. I could literally spend an hour going through these. They're so fun to play with. Um, these will save you a ton of time when you're building for yourself or for your clients. So I really suggest um, learning one of these softwares and, and really just diving in and seeing what you can do. I literally just started with Figma about two weeks ago and I feel like I have it down almost as much as I did as Adobe XD. So if you learn one, you can kind of see which one you like the best and feel it out and then decide for yourself. But once again, I've used the XD, I'm pretty proficient in it and now I would definitely want to switch to Figma if I only could choose one. So. All right, guys, I hope that was informative and valuable. If you have any questions on anything, feel free to drop a comment and let me know, and I will always get back to you personally. I really appreciate all the support, and I will try to keep making stuff that you guys enjoy and find valuable. All right, thanks a lot.